Hi, I'm Reen Wilcoxon. I'm an independent educator and I create in the hoop machine embroidery designs for Embroidery Garden. Today I'm going to show you how to make this cute in the hoop zippered bag. It's fully lined, there are no raw edges inside, and it's made completely in the hoop. This bag features a front panel that's made using cork fabric that's been cut using an electronic cutting machine, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I've taken a piece of cork fabric and laid it right side down on top of the sticky mat. I found that if it's right side down, it cuts better. It cuts through the fibrous uh, backing first. So I've got my file loaded onto the machine and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start the machine. I'm gonna hit cut, start, and it's starting to cut. First, it's going to detect the depth of the material, and then it will start to cut the file. It's gonna take a few minutes for it to cut, so I've already got one that I've cut out. The file is telling the machine exactly how large to cut the rectangle, it's telling it the, what pattern to cut out, and it's cutting out this little notch on the edge. This is a centering mark that's gonna help us line the, pan, uh, the panel up on the front of the bag. So I've got all my pattern pieces cut out that I need, and we're ready to go to the machine. So now I'm over at the machine. I've taken my hoop and I've hooped a piece of lightweight cutaway stabilizer. I've gone ahead and I've stitched the first step. You can see it's two long uh, lines. These are our zipper placement lines. We have to know where to place our zipper. I'm using a regular dress skirt zipper. I'm placing it right side up, centered in the placement lines, and I would tape it down. I'd get the hoop back on the machine and stitch the next step. I've already got one here that has the zipper stitched in place. You can see that it's stitched along both long edges and it made a little centering mark. That mark is important as later on that's how we're gonna line our panel up. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing is to go to the back side of the hoop and I'm gonna take my first piece of fabric, which is a piece of lining, and I'm gonna lay it right side down with one long edge even with the placement line of the zipper on the right-hand side. I'm gonna use a couple of pieces of tape to tape it down in place to hold it. And now I'm gonna turn the hoop to the front side. Now this is where we line up the cork panel. I had told you that we had a little notch here that made a centering mark. We're gonna line it up with the centering mark that, mark that stitched. Just line it up along that edge. I'm gonna use a couple more pieces of tape to tape it in place. And I'm gonna place one more piece of fabric. I'm gonna place it right side down, directly on top of the cork, along that same edge, and I'm gonna put the hoop back on the machine. I'm gonna make sure the piece of fabric on the back stays where I put it. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the next step. This step is stitching the lining piece on the back, the cork fabric, and the piece of fabric on the uh, top all to the edge of the zipper. This piece of fabric on the top here is one that is actually going to be showing through the cutouts of the cork. Now that that step is done, I'm gonna take this top piece of fabric and fold it over. I'm gonna take the tape off the cork because now everything has been stitched down. And I'm gonna fold the piece of cork over the front. Now cork is thicker than fabric and it's not going to lay as nice and flat as a piece of fabric would. So you really wanna crease it and make it lay as flat as you can. You can tape it if you want, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it while it stitches this next step. It's stitching a triple stitch right here at the fold of the cork to hold it nice and flat and in place. Now that that step is done, we're gonna take the hoop off the machine and work on the back side again. And the hoop designs require that you take the hoop on and off the machines a few times. So now I'm ready to go to the back side of the hoop I'm gonna fold this piece of fabric over. I can take the tape off because again, this fabric is stitched down. And I can use the same tape to retape those free edges down. 
going to take my next piece of lining fabric, place it right side down on the back side of the hoop and have one long edge, even with the uh, placement line on the opposite side. I have to tape this piece in place because we don't want it to move. And again, we go to the front side of the hoop. I'm going to go ahead and get the hoop back on the machine and place the next piece of fabric. It goes right side down, one long edge, even with the edge of the zipper tape. Once I get that in place, I'm going to start the machine and it's stitching the piece of lining and this piece of fabric on the top to the edge of the zipper. You could tape it if you want, but I don't tape a lot of pieces on the front of the hoop often because gravity is holding it in place. Now that that step is stitched, I'm ready to place a small piece of batting on the, uh, with one long edge against that seam that just stitched. And I'm gonna fold a piece of fabric over the top of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the next step. That piece of batting is just giving the uh, bag a little bit more body. And this again is another triple stitch that is mimicking the stitch that's stitched along the other side of the zipper. And it's holding the fabric and the batting in place. Okay, it's time to take the hoop off the machine again. And we'll go to the back side one more time. I'm gonna take the tape off and I'm gonna fold this piece of fabric up and tape it down in place. So I have one that I've already done over here. And on the back side, you can see that this fabric is folded up. And you can also see that I've taken a small pair of scissors and I've trimmed out the little piece of stabilizer that's behind the zipper. I'll go ahead and I'll place the next piece of fabric. It goes right side down, centered over the top of the hoop. I'm gonna put a big piece of batting down, centered over top of that, and put it back on the machine. Make sure that your pieces on the back side stay where they are and they haven't moved or the tape hasn't uh, come off. This step is now stitching the fabric and the batting down and it's also um, a step that's part of the construction of the purse. It's actually closing up the bottom of our purse right now. Okay, I'm gonna take the hoop off the machine one last time. We're gonna go to the back side of the hoop. I'm gonna take my last piece of lining fabric and place it right side down on the back side of the hoop. I'm going to tape all four corners in place. Grab a couple more pieces of tape. And we only have one more step to stitch. Yes, the, the lining piece is right side down on the back side of the hoop. I'm gonna put the hoop back on the machine and I'm ready to stitch the last step. This step is going to stitch all the way around, leaving an opening where the previous step stitched. Okay, the bag is finished stitching and it's time to take it out of the hoop. I'm gonna go back over to the table to finish the bag. Our cork piece is done, so let's look at that first. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove it off of the mat. And you can see that the majority of little pieces came out. If they didn't, all you have to do is just kind of poke them out and they'll all come out. And you can also see that it cut the slit on the um, edge for our centering mark. So to finish up our bag, I've taken it out of the hoop and I've started to trim around it. I take my scissors and I trim, I started trimming close to the batting. I wanna go all the way around and take this batting off right next to the stitching. 
And I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. One, it gets the bulk of the batting out of the corners and out of the seams. And it's gonna make our bag lay nicer and flatter and our corners poke out really nice. So let me just finish up right here. Now the bag is ready to be trimmed. Our opening on the bag is on the back side. It's on the lining side. You can see it right here. So to trim the bag, I'm gonna start at the opening and I'm gonna cut up to the stitching about a quarter of an inch on both sides of the opening. Then I'm gonna trim all the way around a quarter of an inch. I can clip my corners diagonally and just trim all the way around the bag. I do wanna leave that opening longer so that I have something to turn in, the raw edges to turn in to close the bag up. So I do have one here that I've completely trimmed around. Let me move some of this out of the way. This one has been completely trimmed around. You can see that I left it longer at the opening and now it's ready to turn. So you just reach inside. I always go to one of the far corners and just start turning the bag through the opening but you would just keep working it until you have all the corners poked out nicely. On this one, I've done that. Um, I've pressed it, the corners are poked out nicely, and here you can see the opening, and I've hand stitched that closed. So the last step is now to go to the other side to fully open the zipper. And to turn the bag again. And you can see the cork panel. And you can see our little fabric peeking through. And again, you're gonna to want to make sure that you get all of your corners poked out nicely. You're going to want to give it a nice press. Um, I wouldn't press directly on top of the cork. I would use a press cloth for that. And you can see that the bag is uh, fully lined. There are no raw edges inside. So after you get everything poked out and pressed, then you have a nice uh, little bag. You can see some of the other bags that I've done that are different sizes. I hope that after you've seen how easy it is to complete a bag completely in the hoop that has no raw edges and is fully lined, that you'll give it a try soon.